Hey guys, Alex from 7th Hour Films back again with Better Call Saul. Last time on Better Call Saul, we had Nacho, where basically uh, Nacho was going to uh, rob the Kettlemans. However, Jimmy gave them advanced warning about it, and so they basically robbed and kidnapped themselves. However, the cops didn't think that was a very likely scenario, so uh, they arrested Nacho, who put the pressure on Saul to get him the hell out of there. Um, and so Jimmy went and found the Kettlemans after a talk with Mike and found them camping uh, a few hours away from their house and uh, with all the money that they had. So yeah, and that was pretty much it. It was a very interesting episode, uh, sort of our introduction to uh, Kim. I don't remember her last name so yeah there's also that um but yeah just a very interesting sort of episode and um didn't get too much of like chuck or anything i mean we got like a flashback at the beginning but that was pretty much it so yeah i'm curious to see where we are going from here i mean jimmy's got to now turn in the kettleman's and then hopefully that will get nacho out of there and nacho will be cool so we'll have to see but yeah, that is pretty much that, so let's go ahead and jump right into this episode of Better Call Saul. Here we go. Hells yeah. Let's do it. Fucking hit it. <laughs> wow. So Fucking hit it. Um, do they... I don't know if they ever used the F word in, uh... Uh, what the hell am I thinking? Breaking Bad. Bro, I never did catch your name. Saul. <clears throat> Saul? It's all good, man. <laughs> no. I do. <laughs> all right, it's all. Huh. Hey, hey, brother, whoa. Check it out. What? Now, is he actually using that name, or was that just Holy something he thought of later? Now, is this before or after the, the scene with Chuck? I don't know. Check for a pulse. Check his pulse, Yugi. Hey, would you answer me? Yeah. Hey, answer this, ball. Eh. Uh, <laughs> leave him. Help yourself to some of this, you butthole. Butthole. Hey, hey, we're not buttholes, but, right? So stop but saying that. Hole, yeah. But, but, butthole. Does this guy walk out of Beavis hey, and Butthead? But, but, but Whatever, Dillhole. It's, I don't know. It's, well, then, let me look at it. Is he just gonna run? It's a damn Rolex. I don't know. Not cool to be greedy, bro. I don't. I don't Not cool. Did you keep? You're keeping the money. No. Uh. <gasps> oh. Hey, what was that uh, crazy stuff about roundhouse kicks? Where the hell did you get that? I don't know. I mean, wow, I didn't even crazy. think about it. it. Too much? No, I loved it. It was like deep or something. No. <laughs> I love watching Bob Odenkirk have to play a hooligan. Anyway, you two, you almost ruined someone's life. Potentially several. Yeah, specifically his. They'll crucify Craig. Can't you just call Miss Wexler again? Yeah, tell her you didn't see Miss Wexler, is that her name? They think. Can I ask you something? What What were you hoping would happen? I mean, before I found you, what were you planning to do? Yeah. Well, we were in the process of, you know, working that out. We were working that out. Mm -hmm. yep. They didn't have a plan. They just right, well, left. We are not guilty. This money belongs to us. We are, well, I mean, Craig earned it. I worked very hard, yeah. you know. I mean, not just what's legal. And you want to talk about legal slavery. I mean, that used to be legal. Human slavery. So. You know, Betsy, yeah. you don't have a way with words. Just pretend you never saw the money. How hard is that? Take it. Take it. I, I mean, I can't take a bribe. Turn them in, but don't take, but don't mention the money. I'm sorry. You just. Just what? Just what? You're the kind of lawyer guilty people hire. A criminal lawyer. I don't think you just helped your case. Pretty much right in their own backyard. Well, <clears throat> five miles above it. Jesus, the night I had. I got pine nuts in my shoes. Mm. I mean, can you believe it? 
I guess you can. J just... Jim, we're not friends. Not the loquacious sort, are you? We can't all be as blessed as you. <laughs> uh, they decide to go camping right after I run my little offer by you? It could be argued that all of life is one great coincidence. Are you really going to be mad about this? You know how much trouble you caused me? Hey, you didn't need any help getting caught, okay? The neighbor ID'd you. You were sloppy. Any trouble you might have, that's on you. Aw, oh, shit. Not to mention the blood in your face. And not to mention a duck. A thought. Ajax. Formula 409. Duh, no you clean. Idea. You should be thanking this good Samaritan. Because whoever he is, he did you a favor. I don't know if he'll buy that. I mean, he is... He's the smart one of Tuco's gang. But, yeah. He has a point. Yep, he took that money. Consulting fees? 1500 Oh, he's justifying the money. We'll wash it out in the morning. Oh, it leech. It doesn't wash out. What? It's permanent? We'll Photoshop the color, okay? Mm. Change of plan, ladies. I want to go with a uh, simple curling iron job, okay? Like the bath scene in Spartacus. Hmm. Stop talking about it. Make me beautiful again. I like this glow up he's got going on. Craig and Betsy really put us in a corner with the police. Not to mention the press. Not to mention a duck. But Yep. What? That's, I mean, that's my suit, right? Am I crazy here? No. Oh. Uh, Look at the logo. That's our logo. J M M James Morgan us. McGill. Really, he's you know a free spirit. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's one way to put it. That hair, though. That's why he wanted it curlier on top. You two are still friends. It's very nice. Told you. I get this free every night. Just one of the perks of Salon living. The other is being free cucumber water, obviously. Obviously. Free mani patties. Uh, deep discount mani patties. Uh, no. The ladies still gotta eat, you know. Well, it's still a deal. Yeah. You don't get that crap at HMM like mm -hmm. or HHM. What's oh, this? Is this cease and desist? Yeah. No. How pissed was he? Well, his head didn't actually explode, but you know, pretty damn pissed. Like this won't <laughs> end well for you, pissed. Uh, yeah. How about that, Jimmy? Then his goal has been achieved. I can advertise, can I? What? Do I have to clear everything past the great? Yes, you can power? advertise, Jimmy, all you want. That billboard is not advertising. That is a declaration of war. Declaration no. of war. That's... It's right at Hamlin's exit. You know he drives by it. <laughs> it's business. I'm building a brand. It's just good You're business. You're ripping off a brand. All right, now he fired the first shot, okay? Trying to keep me from using my name, my own name, Kim. I get that. But this? You're better than this. I'm better than this. Yeah. No. I'm better yeah. than this. I'm better. You are. The cease and desist is just the beginning. The next step is an injunction. You can't win this fight. He incredibly doesn't care. It's about trying to send a message. It's about the principle of the matter. As I've argued repeatedly, this is trademark infringement. Mr. McGill's new logo is an absolute copy of ours. I think it falls firmly under fair use. Fair use. Mm, fair use. Really profiting, so fair Bruh, use. I'm with you. And it, in concert with our tri-rectangle graphic and Hamlindigo blue, constitutes Ham a Lindigo. trademark brand identifier. Whoa, whoa back up. Hamlindigo blue? Yes, that is our trademark name. Holy crap. You seriously named a color Hamlindigo? No. That is... Yikes. Yikes. From the man dressed exactly like me. Your Honor, <laughs> I feel like I'm... You're actively copying their established brand for your own gain. I don't see any other reasonable explanation. Your Honor. Jimmy, I... Jimmy. Wise up. No. The billboard must come down within 48 hours. This is a classic David versus Goliath story. I mean, you got your gigantic law firm stomping all over the little guy. Yeah, but it's investigative journalism at its best. It's right up your alley. 
I mean, uh-huh. I don't think he's actually trying to achieve anything. Yeah, I, I think he's think just trying to piss off Hamlin. I do not want that guy's job. Well, they, he actually got some. No, 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 no. If they want to fight, they're going to get a fight. Because I'm not giving up. Not... Holy shit! Dude! The dude! Dude, the dude! Oh, the, God. The worker got 911. Oh! Yes, help. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> oh, my God. He's going to go be a hero. They're going to get this on camera, aren't they? Oh my god, this is so perfect for his brand. He's gonna go be a hero! I'm looking down, one rung at a time. I'm looking down. Yeah, don't look down. Oh man, I'd be so terrified. Oh! Oh, I, uh, I don't know if I can do that. I'm scared of heights, but... But the call to be a hero! You can't hoist yourself up. I mean, it's probably difficult, but still. <laughs> Come on! Oh. Come on! Come on! Yes! Oh, uh, he's a hero. It, it, bro. Oh. It was part of the plan. I was scared, yes. I mean, momentarily. Can you believe this guy? At least I was able to this whole thing was a publicity stunt. stunt. It's gotta be. Kind of wants. Doesn't matter. Look at all the publicity he's got. You don't think any of it. The whole thing's a damn stunt. Uh, she's, even if, she pr probably knows it is a stunt 100%, but she's happy for it. Local lawyer, local hero. Look at that. It's just showmanship, Chuck. <clears throat> yeah, right. Ah, uh, is Chuck going to see through this? The worm has turned. Oh, that's really great. Yay. So, what do you... I knew you had it in you. I don't know if you 100% buys it. It's a it. journal here. Uh, there you go. No, no, no. Uh, Albuquerque Journal. Not here. Oh, yeah. I didn't see it outside. It wasn't out there? It's always out there. I didn't see it. <laughs> Maybe they forgot to deliver it. Maybe some kids grabbed it. Because if there's one thing kids love, it's local print journalism. No. I don't know what to tell you. <sighs> they all got it. Is he really going to venture out for the Albuquerque Journal? Does he even go outside? Oh my god. He's going to go get the journal. What the hell do his neighbors think is happening? Oh, does he have like oversensitivity or something? Okay, so there is something legit wrong with him. Okay. Like, what the fuck? Okay, I didn't know that. I mean, yeah, they hadn't presented anything. Oh, God. You ventured outside for that story. Alrighty. Alrighty, that's episode four. Okay, so that's what it is specifically. So that's why he would make sure not to have any electricity or anything like that, and he stays indoors as well, is it's some sort of oversensitivity. Okay, so I was curious 
what he had. Like, I, I kind of thought it was something like... Like, I, I thought it was going to be something like... Uh, he had some sort of just basic disease or something and he was just, you know, going too far with, you know, old, you know, wives tale remedies and stuff like that. Um, and I thought that's what it was, but okay. But if he's genuinely, if he genuinely has this oversensitivity, then yeah, I can definitely understand why he is the way he is. Now the whole thing, it almost sounds like, you know, I mean, it sounds like Jimmy should know about this and understand it, but because he had that, you know, moment where I was like, oh, well, what does it matter? I brought in my cell phone and stuff like that. So maybe Jimmy just doesn't understand it, you know? It's entirely possible, but... But okay, I'm, I'm glad they finally uh, at least showed a bit, even if they didn't fully explain. I'm not even sure fully what it is. But it's definitely something that affects him, and that's why he lives the way he lives, you know? Um, now, it's interesting, because obviously this is a recent development with him. Uh, I think they said he's had this for about a year now. Um, but it's also interesting that this is something that he can overcome, which I'm curious about. So, yeah. Interesting stuff. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and jump into the notes. The first thing I wrote down is Slippin' Jimmy. So that was interesting, uh, that flashback. Now I can't tell if that's before or after. Oh, oh excuse me. Hey, hey, hey. I'm not sure if that's before or after uh, the scene with Chuck in the last episode. Um... I don't know. I'm going to I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's actually after and that maybe was part of uh maybe that was part of uh Jimmy eventually getting his act together and becoming a lawyer, you know. It wasn't just the one incident, but it was multiple times maybe that Jimmy fell and eventually it did just come to a point where he was where he had to change his life. So that was pretty interesting. And yeah, it took me... I mean, I didn't even realize that that's what it was, you know? So, uh, we had the whole thing with the Kettlemans, which was interesting. Uh, the Kettlemans, who uh, believe that Craig earned his money, which is uh, interesting, to say the least. Um, they He earned the money. So, I guess it's that he stole the money because he wasn't getting paid well? I mean... Bro, nobody's getting paid well, you know? Nobody's getting paid well for the jobs that they do, so... I don't know. I don't know. I'm still curious as to what year this is supposed to be, because... Like, I, I mean, I know this, uh, the show started in, uh, 2015, but I think, what was it, maybe 2008 or so, uh, when Breaking Bad started, so, yeah, I'm not sure when this is supposed to take place, you know? But I'm curious. I am very curious. Um, but anyway, so... Uh, so they had the whole thing of, you know, taking some of the money... <gasps> oh, God, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm yawning so much. It's the end of the day. It do that does that to me. But anyway, so the whole thing of, you know, take some of the money and then... Um, you know, don't mention that they took the money, basically. Um, and it's interesting, because Saul's main thing going into that was, well, you know, I'm, he, he was trying to, because he was trying to get Nacho, uh, he was trying to get Nacho free, basically. So, that's the important thing, basically. But, um, but yeah, I mean... The whole thing of the money, I mean, this is definitely Jimmy eventually becoming, uh, eventually becoming Saul, becoming a criminal lawyer and embracing it, you know? And right now, he is still straight-laced, you know? Like, he could, like, it's his natural instinct right now to tell Kim that, yes, your clients did steal the money, and yeah, if if he admits that, 
you know, it pretty much ends the Kettleman family. Um, so, and it's also interesting when he says, well, I could take the money if I'm your lawyer, you know? I could take the money if I'm your lawyer. But, man, that's just such a rough moment when she says, well, you're the lawyer that guilty people hire, you know? Which, if you're trying to get the, if you're trying to convince him, saying that I don't think is a great idea, you know? Like, but yeah, it's just like, well, you're hired by guilty people. And it's like, well, oh my god, I'm really tired, apparently. Uh, I mean, the thing is, yes, he does work with a lot of guilty clients, but he does see himself still as straight-laced, you know? He di he does still see himself as a legitimate lawyer and not a criminal lawyer, you know? And that's always been the thing since we were first introduced to Saul on Breaking Bad was... It's like, yes, he is a criminal lawyer, as in he deals with criminals, but he's also a criminal lawyer, you know? Like, that's the thing. Like, he is so good because he knows how to get away with this stuff, you know? So, I mean, yeah, it's it's pretty rough, but I think this is where, you know, he needs to start realizing, he's going to start realizing, you know, the sort of lawyer that he is, basically. And yeah, he he ended up just taking it. He does, I, I like that he did justify it, though, that he basically went over, like, all the expenses of, all the expenses of helping the Kettlemans, and it equaled out to that money, basically, which was interesting. So, he's still trying to justify it. He's still trying, I think, to play the good guy, basically. But, yeah, eventually, I mean, we know how the story ends, you know? We know how the story ends from watching Breaking Bad, you know? So, um, so interesting stuff with Nacho, that uh, Nacho did... I mean, he still blames Saul. He's like, oh, there will be consequences. But I like Saul talking about, like, look, man, you were sloppy, you know? You were sloppy. You were ID'd by one of the neighbors. You had blood in your van. It's obvious why, like, if, if Saul hadn't warned them, the cops would have still known it was him. And that's true, like... For the guy who we kind of said was the brains behind Tuco, it's not much brains, to be honest. Because, yeah, it's like, when you're driving around in a suspicious-looking van that has blood in it, like, dude, clean the blood. What are you doing? Clean the blood. I'm turning into Jerry Seinfeld talking about this. Why don't you just clean the blood? I mean, why would you drive around in a sus-looking van with blood in it? Like, seriously. So... Now, I understand, you know, it's like, oh, well, you're the one who ratted me, so there's going to be consequences. Like, dude, it's not, like, he just, he just got you out. Saul went out of his way, walked for hours in the, in the desert, in the New Mexico wilderness, to find the Kettlemans and bring them in and take everything away from you, you know? Like, you should be thankful, you know? Like, this, like, yes, I understand, because, yes, it was Saul that technically warned them. But he got you out of there in what may have been the best possible outcome. So, eh... I don't know. I, I think Saul's definitely got a point. Whether or not Nacho's going to do anything now, we'll have to see. Um, and then, yeah, we had uh, Jimmy copying Hamlin style. I love that. You know, at first I was like, why the hell is he getting... Why the hell is he getting the, you know, the... Uh, it sounded like curly hair. I was like, what the hell is he doing? But I love he specifically... He specifically copied Hamlin's style and logo just to spite him, you know? 
just to spite him. Which all of this, it's not just, I guess it's not just to spite him, but it's to get his name out there, you know? It's to get his name out there. And honestly, I think more more of the reason that we saw the Slip and Jimmy scene at the beginning, even though, like, because that's not a Slip and Jimmy moment. Because he didn't slip and do the whole Slip and Jimmy routine that we heard about. But that showed Jimmy being a scammer, you know? It's like watching Ed, Ed, and Eddie, you know? Watching Eddie come up with this crazy-ass scam, you know? And that's exactly what he did here. He did all of this, copied the style, he took the cease and desist, and he went to court, and yes, he had that whole thing, and then he went and was like, oh, you know, he's gonna make this video, and then he staged it to where the dude fell off, he saved him, and then that got on the news, it got the front page on the Albuquerque Journal. Even if it is a plub he, even if it is a publicity stunt, and Hamlin knows, yes, it is 100% a publicity stunt. But it's a publicity stunt that worked. Like, no, you think the average person would be like, ah, pfft, no. Like, no, they're going to say, wow, that's, what a hero, you know? What a hero. Like, yes, Jimmy obviously knew that Hamlin would see right through that. But he's not trying to convince Hamlin. He's trying to convince the people and get his name out there. And he did. That's the greatest thing is this is working. It's not, you know, it's not, uh, it's not working on Hamlin or Kim or Chuck, but it's working on the people. And that is the point. So I like that. I, I really do like that. I also like just the talk that uh, Jimmy and Kim had uh, with the massage chairs and stuff. It, it, it was a nice moment. Honestly, I really do buy their friendship. Like, it is really good. So, so I like that. Uh, and then the last thing uh, is Chuck and the Albuquerque Journal. It's very interesting that he did. I mean, maybe he suspected that Jimmy was lying to him, but... It could have just been that he just wanted the Albuquerque Journal, and so he just, yeah, he he braved the outside with his oversensitivity, and he went and got the Albuquerque Journal, and the front page, the front page is Saul Goodman. I love, to the origin now, the origin of the name. I mean, this, honestly, I... I know this is the biggest meme, but I'm going to say it. This is the moment that Jimmy B Jimmy McGill became Saul Goodman. I'm just going to say it. I'm just going to say the meme, you know? Christ, Marie, they're minerals. You know, I'm just like, I'm going to say all the memes, you know? Jesse, what the fuck are you talking about? But, but I love how he came up with the name too. It's like, oh, what's your name? Saul. Saul? Saul Goodman. Like, that is... I never thought about that. That is so stupid, but I love that, you know? I remember in Breaking Bad, though, when he when he first talked about his name, and he was like, it's like, my, my real name is Jimmy McGill. The Goodman thing I just put on for the Jewish, you know? Like, he, he said something like that, I'm pretty sure. It's like, ah, well, the Jewish like the name Goodman, so I just go with that. But yeah. Um... So I like that. And then, and yeah, that whole scene with him and Hamlin uh, in front of the judge was great. Um, and yeah, the judge, I mean, that's it, it went down exactly the way Hamlin wanted, but exactly the way that Jimmy wanted it, you know? That's exactly what he wanted. He, he formulated that entire thing, and it worked. It 100% worked. Even if they see through it, it worked, and he's getting cases, so... So I like that. That was really interesting. Curious to see where we are going in the next episode. How will Chuck respond to the the scams of his little brother? And uh, how long will this feud with Hamlin keep going? I don't know. We'll have to find out. But that is basically it. With all that being said, I'm Alex from 7th Hour Films, and I will see you guys next time.
take care. Alright guys, thanks for watching this video. There's a bunch of links on screen if you want to go click around to any of those. There's a playlist for all of my Better Call Saul reactions, as well as another playlist for all my Breaking Bad reactions if you haven't seen those. There's also a subscribe button and a Patreon button on screen, as well as other links in the description if you want to go check out any of those. See you guys later.